guys, welcome to Shelby Wright Garage and part 6 of the deathbed truck build. In last week's video we discussed the engineering issues and we made a little bit of a start on stripping out some of our bits and pieces with the F-Truck. Unfortunately we ran out of time due to Sydney weather not playing the game, so we've got a loaded ute now full of tools. Let's go and head off to the storage yard and strip out that 36 chassis that we need. And here we are at our storage yard. Here's the 36 chassis waiting for us. Got a little bit of crap to move out of the way first. We've got this very big diff that's got to get gone. We brought the engine crane. Either that or we'll shift it backwards, not sure yet. Got to get it rid of this front axle as well. And then we should have enough room and clearance to make our cuts along here at the kink of the chassis. And of course we've got to do our other cuts towards the back here where it starts to taper up. Let's get involved. Make a start by cutting the front of the chassis first. Back end, we've got to mark out a 45 degree angle. But before we make these final cuts, we are going to have to pop that last rivet out on each side.
that's officially the end of the line for the old 36 chassis. But the good news is we will be able to make a little bit of yard art with all these bits and pieces. We'll do that in an upcoming episode, I think. Let's get back to home base. And now that we're back at home base, in the spirit of breaking up our chassis, we may as well keep going with these F-Truck units. not much left of this chassis anymore. Looking pretty bare. Alright, so moving on. Unfortunately Sydney's not going to play the game too well with weather. Already had a bit of rain today already. So we're going to have to move things indoors for a bit. 
So we're going to focus on the wheels and tyres now. And whilst we've still got a bit of decent weather remaining, we're going to strip these tyres right out and move it all inside. Being a 40 plus something year old tyre, these have just gotten so bloody hard. So we're just going to keep letting this fire soften up this rubber and we should be able to move this ring and then we've got to do it for all bloody 10. And on these really old stubborn tyres, even the recipro helps at times. So we managed to get eight of our rims stripped out. Turns out two of them are a little bit different, so we're not going to be using them. But eight is enough. We need a minimum of seven. So we're now going to be looking at getting these two rims back to back. This is our F-Truck rim stripped as well. And we need to use this as a guide in order to redrill the original Chevy rims. So we're going to use these plates Weld them all together and turn them up on the lathe and we'll show you how that's done. Beautiful. So after finishing up with the lathe, we've got a couple of dowels here with some pilot holes. We'll use the small one and then the big one just to make sure we've got our studs perfectly lined up. And time to drill them all out.
So whilst we've got ourselves a perfect fit on the studs and centre ball, unfortunately our hub along here is a little bit large in order to fit the inner band of the wheel. This is also the same problem up front. So we have got engineer's approval to machine this part down pretty much right to where that stud sits. But that'll be in an upcoming video. In the meantime, let's get these other seven rims sorted. With all eight re-drilled, the last step before fitting tyres is to fill up the original holes with weld. Here they are, all eight of them done and dusted. Mid 50s Chevrolet truck rims, modified to fit mid 2000s Ford truck diffs, which are then modified to fit a mid 30s Dodge truck. Now that's the spirit of hot rodding. So it looks like we've got some decent weather now. So we can finally turn our attention back to the chassis and we've got to do ourselves an extension. And so I think we'll start by going back to all of our donor frames from the 36 and the F truck and take all the little last bits and pieces that we need for this extension and conversion. Now that we've got our main donors all sorted out, let's 
time to move on to the main chassis. So moving on to the chassis, before we start stripping it out, we've got to tackle some of these brackets, like for the running boards that have got some cracks on them. And as we walk over to the driver's side, you can see one of them's actually completely fallen off. So we'll strip them out, repair them, put them back on, and then realign them before stripping them for the final time. And after that, we then need to look at focusing the fender brackets here. Now these are the 36 items. We've got the 35 ones back. So we're gonna look at actually refitting these because we also need to do our extension. We've got to widen them by about 20 centimeters. And once those brackets are done, then the whole thing gets stripped apart. So now we're all dead level, nice and square, and some even measurements all the way across. You beauty. So the way that we're going to extend these 35 brackets now is to use a dedicated sacrificial piece of angle. You can see we've spot welded it and made our markings. They're on the uppermost point. So once we slice them, we'll be able to widen it by 235 millimeters and we have ourselves a dead flat bracket, which we can then use another straight edge to make sure we have perfect alignment because it's very important that we don't have it frontwards, rearwards, or too much to the side or drooping down, we've got to get these fenders dead accurate.
Now we can remove these and do the final bit of welding and bracing. Happy days. We've certainly got our width now. You can see just how much wider it is over stock. It's going to be a wide body deathbed truck. And with both sides extended and braced, the mounting holes re-drilled for the 36 lights, time for our final teardown. And there it is. Every single last nut, bolt and rivet has been completely removed. And this is all that remains of our 35 truck. Literally everything's gonna be built from the ground up using these components. Nothing else of originality is being retained. There you go guys, unreal eh? We are literally building it from the ground up. So as part of our steps to join these two chassis pieces together, it's going to make it a lot easier to get everything aligned from side to side by making everything go back to back. Got the land out pushed to the side, all the chassis rails back to back and inside. Now we spent a bit of time off camera guys, we've lined everything up perfectly. I've lost count 
of the amount of clamps that we've got holding this together. But we've used a straight edge. It's good to go. It's time to weld this bad boy together. We've got about a six meter long chassis rail here now. You beauty. have it. One extended pair of chassis rails. Dead straight as they should be. Happy bloody days. That is one giant step in the right direction. Alrighty guys, that's going to have to wrap up this episode. We are running out of time. Pretty happy with the results of the chassis. We've made a good positive step forward now. All of our previous episodes have been planning and generally dismantling and gathering some parts. So it's really good to actually get some momentum rolling now. Um, look, you know, we took ages to get this video done. I think there was probably about 60 hours worth of fooling around over about eight or nine days just to get the rims and tires alone sorted. So I'm having a bit of difficulty getting these videos out the door, unfortunately. Um, all this metal work and, and fabrication does take its time and its toll. Now, that said, the next video that you're going to see is back to the Landau. And whilst we're going to keep on working on this truck, we do have at least one more rally up ahead for the end of this year. So we will probably have to swap over to Death Proof and look at doing its repairs and modifications for that. But regardless, we're still full steam ahead. We're still full steam ahead on the truck, land out death proof. We've got plenty more content heading your way. Like always, check out our links in the description and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Cheers guys. Why is that not there? Plus in the way. Son of a bitch.